Well, hello there, it's Crazy Cheap Chick, and this video is gonna be all about the stuff we're getting done around our five acre homestead. We've been super busy because it's time to plant garden. We built a new uh, garden hoop and we've been working on the pond. So if you wanna see what we've been up to, come along. Well, that's very Kansas-y. Little pond over there. And I just wanted to stop and show you what range burning looks like in Kansas. In the spring, they burn off all the fields. And sometimes there'll be so much smoke, you can't see across the road. But after they burn the field off, the grass comes back really super green. And when they burn at night, it's really cool. So here you can see this. And you can see one burning out here. And if I flip this around like this, they're burning over there, they're burning over there, and they're burning over there. Looks like someone's harvesting some walnut. Oh, that's, that's a lot of walnut. thousands of dollars of walnut there. I just pulled my seeds out of the garage and they're doing pretty good. It's still, it is so cold today and even next week it's going to get down to like 33 at night. So I'm not going to plant these yet even though some of them are starting to get maybe just a little bit leggy. You know, you don't normally want them to be quite that big. Some things have done better than others. Um, I cannot seem to plant and grow cauliflower from seed to save my life. And some things I didn't think were gonna come up are finally starting to come up. I had got a plant, um, well actually I bought a melon when we were down in Florida and I saved the seeds out of that melon and they're even finally coming up. So kind of happy about that. Most of these are seeds that are heirloom seeds. Um, these tomatoes I killed off. I think I probably brought them outside too soon. They were too tender. They may come back. I don't know. And the rest of them I probably should have planted about a month earlier because those are not going to be ready to plant for a while. Ricky and Lucy have basically claimed this area as their home right by the boat and where my husband puts out corn for them. I've always thought this bank was kind of raw and ugly, and so I'm going to try poking some seeds in the top of some vines to see if they'll kind of grow down towards the water. I don't know if that'll work. It's an experiment. Now, since we had about an inch of rain, you can see how this drains. And eventually we're going to put rock in there and make that a dry creek bed. Um, but until now, it's just, till then, it's just going to be kind of a ditch. <laughs> what I'm going to plant, two different kinds of morning glories. Wow, you want to talk about skimping. One of these packages only had eight seeds, and the other had 18. Not very many seeds. And this one, it says 120 days to flower, and the other 50. I'm trying planting some moonflowers here on the edge right across from this little seating area. We always call this the beach. I don't know why, there's no sand down there. <laughs> but we'll see if these moonflowers grow. That'd be really pretty if they would drape down here, but for all I know, we'll get a high rain and wipe them away. We're bringing all the glacier rocks we have on our farm, and we're gonna eventually make a little water feature up here. This is an ornamental grass I grew last year, but I'm going to try planting the seeds and see if it comes up. Looks like Ricky and Lucy are coming down to check me out. Are you going to throw us some food? No, I am not. You've got corn. 
you greedy, greedy geese. I'm hoping they lay eggs. That would be so, so cool. Down here at the creek, and I just want to get to get some pictures of these flowers. They're native. They're called blue filix. And when I was growing up, we always thought of these as the first sign of spring. I mean, when you would see these, it was kind of exciting, you know. Get my cherry trees planted today. I could only find two. And I think this one is a Bing. Yeah, Bing cherry. 37.98. Oh, trees are getting high, aren't they? And this one is a dark cherry star. $39.98. So I was just thrilled I could find any cherry trees. Couldn't find any cherry trees last year, and I could only find two this year. And I was told they probably will not be getting more in. Well, I see Dad put out some corn for you. Hopefully near my garden. I'm hoping to at least get some potatoes planted today. Now what I've done, this is my garden, it's all tilled, and I like, this is just hog panels. We use stakes and hog panels because we have so many deer, and deer can jump like 8-10 feet, it has to be really high. Um, we learned that the hard way. And I like it though because then I can use it like I tie my strings to go across. And I've already um, hoed my rows for the potatoes. So now we're just gonna drop the potatoes in. I've got my pieces all cut up from one bag ready to drop in the hole. Now, if you wanna do this absolutely the correct way, and I wish I had, but I didn't think about it, you should cut them and let them sit for a day or two and kind of heal over and dry out but I didn't do it. So I'm gonna just go ahead and plant them directly into the ground, see what happens. It'll probably be okay, but when I was growing up, that's how we did it. Um, you would cut them, let them sit for a day or two, and then plant them. Okay, I bought these at Tractor Supply, and they are in bad, bad shape. About half of them are rotten. I mean, really rotten. So I'm probably going to try to take that back and ask for my money back because so many of them were just really bad. But I'm going to go ahead and try it because it is going to pour tonight, supposedly, and then I'm gone all next week. So I'd like to get at least one row in. Then normally you would just cover those up with dirt. I think I'm going to let them dry out a little bit before I cover them. I don't feel high hopes for these potatoes, not because I'm not doing it right, but because they were so rotten. Well, as you can tell, it's thundering and it's freezing. I was going to try to get these old flower seeds down uh, before the rain came. That's my duck food. I spend way too much money at this place. And when I get back from my trip, I'm going to spend more. I did not know that Tractor Supply had a do-it-yourself pet wash station for $9.99. Cold Sparky might be getting a bath. Couldn't resist buying another apple tree just because it was so big. Usually these trees are about half the size. This one is a Jonah Mac. I don't think I have one of those. Hopefully I can keep the deer from eating it. We knew we had bad storms while we were gone, and we came home, and it looks like we had a tree come down. Just what we needed. <sighs> we'll put this in the, it's always something file. 
That tree fell down while we were out of town. And um, it wasn't one of the trees we thought was at risk. So it was kind of shocking to come home and find that. So that's another tree that needs cut up. These blackberries are really taken off. Not only did I have a tree fall down, I got gifted a bunch of wood chunks. So these chunks have floated down when we got the storm while we were gone and they're scattered throughout the creek. Well, those flowers are pretty. Looks like the bleeding hearts are about done though. I found five morel mushrooms. Now these are a really prized treat here in Kansas. I hate them. Well, there's one. He's a little past his prime, but I'll bet my husband eats him. I always look where I would want to grow if I was a mushroom and they're never there. And then I look like someplace stupid and they're there. Well, there's two morel mushrooms. Bet my husband's going to be happy about that. He loves these things. I hate them. Lucy, I have your duck food. Come on. I bought these cattails off uh, Facebook Marketplace. And I've got one, two, three, four. I paid $20 for all of them. And they told me they spread rapidly. <laughs> so we'll see if they make it. They should make it. I think they're more of a weed. But we need some kind of habitat if we're going to put fish in here. Now we've already got Lucy down there. She would probably enjoy a little cover too. I'm going to start by planting some tomatoes here on the back of the house. Um, I think I have four big beef and four super sweet 100. They're cherry tomatoes. And I like these on the back of the house just because I don't have to walk all the way up to the garden to pick a tomato when I just need one or two tomatoes. Look at that can. It's already starting to grow even though it's been in a shop all winter. And that's what I like about plants. Plants make more plants. So I think I started out with just like one and now I've got lots and lots of cannas. And um, I dug them up last fall, now I'm gonna plant them. I've got 12 canna bulbs in the ground. I'm gonna cover them up. And I think the rest I'll take up and plant around the pond. I'm gonna do one long row of these peas uh, along the fence and then try to train them up the fence because these get pretty tall, about 36 inches. 36 inches, what, that's three foot tall. I mean, that's like up to here. So maybe I can get them to grow through the fence a little bit. So what's the plan? How do you do this? I forgot from the last time we built one. Uh, another straight line. Then I'll dry the stakes in, lay the boards up against the stakes, and then just put the wire up against the board. And bend it over? Bend it over. Now we got our boards all staked in. All they are are long boards eight feet apart. And we cut up conduit to use as our stakes. And now we're ready to bend the um, hog panels over it. It's going to be a lot of vegetables. Come on, dear. You got to eat. I'm sure the deer are going to be very interested in this. What's that? I'm sure the deer are going to be very interested in this new contraption. They check out everything. 
I've got two rows of potatoes that I'm getting ready to cover. And my second row looks slightly crooked. I had a bunch of volunteer something come up. And uh, I just thought if it worked that hard to come up, I'm leaving it. Now the potatoes, you know, I cut them. And you kind of let them scab over like this before you plant them. So once you cut them, it takes like a week or so before you can plant them. I've never grown asparagus bean before, but I'm going to try it right here on this trellis. And I've got two rows of green beans planted. I'm going to plant some starts in the new hoop today. Now, these are the worst starts I've ever had. I don't know what happened. The new garden hoop is up, and I got a lot of seeds planted. Um, I kind of made a bit of a mistake. I brought my plants out. Oh, I don't know, like a week ago, <laughs> thinking it was warm enough. And because uh, you're really supposed to harden off your plants before you plant them. And apparently um, that was still a little too cold for their little tiny plant feet. And they got just slightly, um, I don't want to say frostbite because it, it didn't get down to freezing. It's just they were, new plants are very, very tender. So don't make that mistake. Don't make the mistakes I make, which is bringing your plants out too soon. But they're planted now and they'll probably recover. Stacked cats today. How are you, kitties? Good? You good, Tessie? You good? Have some sad news to report the pond is still leaking and it leaks right in here which is where it leaked before we did all the work to it now we don't know why people chose to build a pond up here on top of a hill rather than at the bottom of the hill where you could have seen it from the house <laughs> and we're kind of stuck with it up here so now we're going to try a product called Dammit that's supposed to uh, plug leaks. Rapid leak sealer for earthen dams and ponds. Head straight to the bank. I straighten it up. Pull it. Pull it. Keep it right there in the middle. Okay. Start turning. Push it away from you. Exactly. Keep it pushing it away from you. Keep pushing it away. Yeah. You're just gonna flip in a big circle here. Okay. Now start pulling towards you a little bit. No. 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 Back. To, back away from you. that in the water you can kind of see it out there I said it would have been better if you'd had a better boat driver you can perch on anything can't you yeah no matter how narrow you can get on top of it making these yes. for a class what kind of cookies are these they're called crinkle cookies crinkle cookies what kind of class are you taking a baking class. You're taking a baking class? Yeah. Ooh, those are soft. Those look yummy. They smell delicious. Mm. Wow, my daughter has these flowers planted. I've never seen those before. Those are gorgeous. I have to find out where she got those. They look like some kind of mutated daisy. Well, thank you so much for watching my video all the way to the end. I really appreciate it. Now, I want to give you a little word of advice. This is something that happened to me years ago. I went to look up something on the internet about a place and I couldn't find anything except some lady's 
vlog that she was keeping and it answered all the questions I had about the location but I started reading her vlog and I got really into it and I don't really I don't remember what her name was but let's just say her name was Hildy because it was kind of one of those old-fashioned sounding names and anyway Hildy had been a librarian and uh, her whole life she'd been a, a librarian reading about places and now she wanted to go out and see places. And she was recently divorced and she retired and bought an RV and she took off to see the United States or everything she could see in her RV. And I got to where like the highlight of my day at this time was reading Hildy's vlog <laughs> of where she was going and what she was doing. And uh, of course Hildy didn't know I existed. And um, it got to the point where, you know, at some point in the day, I would be like, I wonder if Hildy got that stain out of her blouse. Um, I wonder if she's tried a little borax on that. You know, I was thinking like that. Or it would be like, huh, I wonder how that uh, chili Hildy made last night turned out. And you, this is not a person I knew had ever met and or who knew I existed, but she had become um, in my mind, I was really into her vlog and thinking about her a, a lot. Um, don't do that to me, because I'm not that interesting. I'm not Hildy. I'm not, I'm not doing the exciting things Hildy are. But you are invited to follow along on the things we do here around our homestead. Um, you're more than welcome to offer me advice on what I'm doing wrong, as long as you do it in a respectful way. And... Um, we have lots of fun out here. So if you enjoyed the video, if you want to be a part of the five acre homestead life we're trying to lead, then give me a like, a thumbs up. Uh, you're more than welcome to comment or share. Um, but what really helps me out is when people subscribe, because if I can get to a thousand subscribers, that's when I can monetize my channel. And people ask me all the time, like, why are you doing a YouTube channel at your age? Money. The reason I'm doing it is for money. <laughs> I, you know, I hope at some point that it will start providing a little ad revenue for me. Um, and as I get closer and closer to retirement, I start thinking of um, ways that I could possibly make a little cash to supplement my retirement income. So anyway, have a great day.